Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today we are doing a 3D letter. I'm gonna show you how to um, size it properly and then also how to decorate it. And I already made it and I absolutely love it. So first of all, can you hear it? <laughs> so it's the letter K and I'm gonna see if I can get really, really close. So it's the letter K and um, it's got butterflies and flowers, but the cool thing is you can see the depth of this, it's totally open. So I have a clear acetate layer on top, and then my sequins are in there, like big sequins, making a lot of noise. So you can see all the way through. So it's an empty one this time, which is the first time that I've made this. So, but I have to say, I'm always gonna make it like this because it was so much easier to, to deal with than um, doing the thin one that I usually do, which is it has a backing and then you have a thin layer of the shaker. First of all, it's not as pretty. And secondly, you have to deal with foam. Now, not everyone has the maker where you can actually cut with the rotary blade and cut your foam sheets. So this is a great alternative. And again, it was so much easier and it's so much prettier. So why right <laughs> all right so let's do this um first thing is i bought my 3d letters on etsy from namara quintella and i have to say the file is awesome um it is i mean I, it's cheaper because you get the whole thing right it's 18 dollars. it comes with letters numbers and um punctuation marks or i forget what she calls it accents or something like that um, as opposed to in design space, I think they're a dollar per letter, uh, and it's a thinner one. So like, if you can kind of see, this is thick, like it's, and so it's very stable because it is thick. It sits properly. I've seen a lot of other, um, YouTubers where they have to put weights inside so that it stands upright. Like this is fine. It's got, and it has a lot of stuff in the front and it stands perfectly. So it's a well-structured design, which is important. And I, I just like, because it's thick, it has a lot of room for making it pretty, um, which is what we do, right? We're not gonna make it plain. So, all right, let's get started. So you have your file, it's already downloaded. What you do need in this case is we do need to make a quick pit stop in Inkscape because if you can see here, this thin line right here um, of, the, of the gold K, the outline is right here. We need to go into, into Inkscape. So let's go into Inkscape first. Um, you're gonna go to File and Import and you need to import you know, the, the actual image. So you need to know where you saved it. <laughs> and in my case, it is, let's see, O, uh, M, oops, it must be this one, the one that I skipped over. Okay, so here it is, it's the letter K. Now the funny thing, oh, and just click OK. The funny thing about this file, when it comes in, it looks like it's blank, right? So here's our file. Just click on a color down here so that we can actually see it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the only thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do the off, the internal offset. So don't worry about the tabs, we're focused on here. So right now this is currently selected. You can see the dotted lines around it. So just take your arrow, go click in an empty space over here, and then go and click on your paint bucket and pick on a color. And then here, you're gonna do your, your internal offset. So because we wanna go inside, it's gonna be a negative number. If we want it to grow, then it's just a positive number and you would type in 10, 20, 30, whatever. In this case, we're gonna type in negative, I'm gonna do negative 15 just so that you can see what it looks like. I'll do it on this one. So that's what negative 15 looks like. Let's, and then let's click on the arrow, click in the empty space, paint bucket, and a different color. And then let's try negative 20 just so that we can see what that looks like and then click inside the K. So we have both. I can't remember which one I did. I know, I'm so sorry, but that's okay. We can go in and we can try to figure it out. Um, all right, so we have our internal offset. That's all we need from Inkscape. Click on your arrow button, grab the whole thing. You wanna grab your whole canvas and then go to path, object to path, and then file, save as. So I'm gonna do save as, um, K internal offset demo so that I can remember. 
let's go into design space and of course I've already uploaded it but it's okay we'll go to um, upload upload image browse and then you need to find your file so mine was um, K internal offset demo right Okay, so it's this one right here. Double click on it. Um, you want to rename your image if you didn't name it properly the first time because you want to be able to find this over and over and over, right? Um, same thing with tags. The, the more descriptive you are, the, e the easier it will be for you to find it in the future. Um, I'm horrible with tags. I never put one in. So I try to name it where I can remember. Um, all right, so let's click on save. So now it's going to show up in your recently uploaded images. You can view all and see everything that you've uploaded or you can search for your images next time and just type in k but right now it's right here so i'm going to click on it and then go and click on insert images okay so where is our file here's our file we need to resize it so the thing with 3d letters is our tabs are usually longer and bigger than our letters so in order to kind of make sure that um, our tabs fit within our 12 by 12 cardstock, this is what you need to do, okay? So first thing is we need to ungroup this because right now our tabs are going this way, right? It's kind of hard to measure and make sure that everything gets resized at the same time because if you resize your tabs and you don't resize your letter, it's not going to fit <laughs> and it's going to be really hard to resize one and then resize the other one later. So you want to resize it all at one time. Um, so this is still attached. So click on it and ungroup. All right. So now everything is removed. The other thing that I do before I resize is do you see these little indicators? They match the little shapes on here. But if you're doing one letter at a time, you know that this long piece has to go right here. So if it goes right here, then you know this piece and this piece will um, kind of flag the, the long piece, right? So I get rid of all the indicators. I don't need them because I feel like I can tell where they go. So in that case, I'm just gonna go up here and you see this, these are the indicators. I love using the right-hand side um, panel to move things, access it, whatever. So I'm gonna hit the shift key, I'm gonna grab all three of these and I'm just gonna click the delete key. So it's gone. Okay, now you wanna grab your tabs and we wanna to go to rotate. We wanna go and do 90 degrees because we want them upright. We wanna know how big can I make this and still fit on my 12 by 12 cardstock. So as you know, right now the K, you see how the Ks are the smallest things on here? Our tabs are the longest, um, uh, the longest pieces. So our tabs are going to dictate how big our letters are going to be. So currently right now our letters are at nine inches high, right? But we can't do it this way because look at how tall our tabs are. Our tabs are 15.486. It's too big. We can't cut it unless you have 12 by 24 cardstock. Then you can almost do whatever size you want, right? But I'm assuming everyone just has 12 by 12 cardstock. So in this case, what you want to do is you want to grab all of this because you need to resize it at one time okay um and normally what i would do is go to align and align bottom i want everything on the same platform so that when i'm measuring height everything is being measured on the same um with the same ruler right we're all starting this is our zero point and we're going up to see how tall everything is okay so you can see from this picture that this middle tab is what's going to drive our size it is the longest piece so this piece max is going to be 11.5 so i'm going to go to my height and type in 11.5 and everything gets readjusted accordingly so it's going to be proportionate, everything's still gonna fit. So now my longest tab is 11 and a half inches high. So my K is going to be 6.7 inches high. Um, I ended up doing it at this height. Yeah, I did do it at this height because I wanted to do 12 by 12 cardstock. You, There is one more trick in order for you to make this larger and still use 12 by 12 cardstock. And I'll show you right now. If you wanted to do this that way, you know this is our longest piece, right? 
So what I would do is I would rotate these by 45 degrees. I'm gonna do this diagonally, okay? So you can kind of see that this is all bigger, right? So um, we still have space. Like this is now only 9.2 inches. I can go up to 11 and a half. So you could make everything bigger in that sense. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I didn't do that. When you do that, you do end up wasting a lot of paper because all that can fit on your 12 by 12 cardstock is one tab. So, all right. So now that we have our tabs and we have our letters, I am going to, I'm going to delete this because we don't need that. That was from my original design. So let's look at this for a second. Here are our letters. So it looks like, let me flip this over. Let's see which one did I end up using. I, it looks like I did this one, which was the 15, because the 20, I think the K is so messed up. Yeah, so I definitely use the, fifth, the minus 15. I'm gonna get rid of this. So we have our minus 15, right? So this is gonna be, if you look at this, this is our top K that you can't see. Um, actually, we don't have a top K. Our top K we don't have at all. Our bottom K is behind here. Our tabs, these three tabs folded up so that they're um, creating this wall for us. And then our top K is actually an acetate layer. So I made it gray so that I can kind of, you know, it's kind of clear. So this is my acetate layer. That's what's going to keep all my shaker stuff inside, right? But I can still see in it. Then this purple layer is actually, I had um, like pretty paper on the inside. It's mostly white. It has a little bit of gold because I wanted the sequins or the, you know, all that shaker stuff to have a um, I wanted the background to be up on top because when the letters are sitting like this, everything pretty drops to the bottom, right? All our shaker pieces are down at the bottom. It's only up at the top when you go like this. So I like to have, it, it seems to me like a good idea to have some sort of like pretty design, but not something that takes away from everything, but just adds a little bit. So I have this white paper with a little bit of gold in it. That's going to be this paper right here, this K. So again, this K is our acetate layer. This K is our gold that goes inside where the sequins are gonna sit on top. And this is our bottom most layer. So then what we need is we need this outline. To create the outline, what you need to do is you need your, in, your in, internal offset. Let's make a copy of this, okay? So you're gonna duplicate that. So you're gonna bring it up here and I'm gonna zoom in so we can see a little bit better in here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slice. So let me make it bigger. Okay, so we're gonna put this K inside. So let's go to arrange and send to the front. We're gonna put it inside and kind of like even where you think is most even. To me, that looks good. It looks even all the way around. So now you're gonna take your cursor grab both items and you're going to slice you not need the slice results okay so all of this oops this we want this we can delete so these two items we're going to delete and so this is my pretty gold that's lining the k all the way around so let's zoom back out all right so I'm going to try to color coordinate this stuff. Okay, so yeah, acetate, gold paper on top. So I'm gonna get rid of this because we have it right here. And then this is our bottom layer. Let me zoom out one more time. So we've got the pretty paper on the inside. We don't need this. So the way it's gonna be layered is this is going down. <clears throat> um, and then this is building the walls. Then we're gonna have our acetate layer on top. And then we're gonna put this paper, oh, this paper goes on the inside, acetate layer on top. This is decorative. The K is sort of the, the, 
beginning of everything that's going to go on top of it the flowers the butterflies etc okay so this is what everything's going to sit on this and our acetate layers so actually let me bring this to the front so remember that our gray is clear this is our little gold kind of outline that's really really pretty and so everything all our butterflies and our flowers and our leaves are sitting on top of this k so now that we have all of this built i'm just gonna delete oh, oh i don't want to delete it let me just move it to the side okay i'm gonna move this up here so oops so that now i can zoom in a little bit and we're just going to deal with decorating okay all right so let me move this over so in the um decorating i absolutely love these flowers so let's go and find the patterns for these flowers so what i did was i just um i mean they're going to be over here it's easier to see over here so here's our first flower and you can see the image, here's the flower image. So you would just type in, under when you go to images to search, you would type the pound sign M295B4444, right? So that's that one. This one is, here's the image info, but I'm gonna show you how to search for it, but I wanna give this to you. Um, I will make sure this is in the details of the actual video, okay? So right now let's go into images and I typed in rolled flowers. When you're doing the rolled flowers, so like this is an option, right? Um, I, I actually don't like the circle ones. Do I think, oh, I do have it down here. It's my smallest one. I feel like it's the most plain. I like the ones that are shaped like a real petal. So let me show you which one that is. Let's search for it. Um, I think it was, oh, I think it was these two. So this one and this one. All right, I'm gonna insert. So this was a guessing game for me. I didn't know how big my flowers were gonna roll out to. So what ended up happening is, we, now we know, let me measure it really quickly. Um, and it can change because if you don't roll it tightly, then your flower is gonna be bigger. If you roll it super tight, it might actually be smaller than what I ended up rolling. So you're gonna get about an inch and a half to two inches with the outer petals, right? So it's that's how small and tight it can be and how big it can get. So, and the width or the, the length, the dimensions, is about, you wanna be at about four and a half inches. That will roll into about one to two inches depending on how much you um, squeeze it. <laughs> this one is about four and a half inches across. So all of them in that range of four inches to four and a half inches, okay? I wouldn't worry about this too much because if you feel like it's too long, you can just trim it like with a pair of scissors before you um, set it with your with your um, glue gun so all right so you have that the flowers I went with gold because I have a gold theme running for my um, for these 3d letters for the next three that we're doing so um, you just want to size it like I said resize it to about four to four and a half inches and then I changed my flowers so I'm gonna delete these for now because we have all of these here um, and the flowers right now are grouped together. So if you make this kind of big, your flowers will match accordingly. It's up to you how big you want the, the leaves, if the leaves wanna, if you wanna match the leaves or not. But the leaves are actually a good indicator. So let me zoom out for a second. The leaves, if you kind of put it up against the K, is this about the size you want? Then you can leave the flower that size because it's grouped together. I'm assuming that the designer made it proportionate. So, all right, so there is that. Um, so you need to ungroup this eventually so that your flower is detached from your flower. Your leaves are detached from your flowers. <laughs> so I'm gonna delete that, delete this, and you know that you can just change the color by clicking on it and going up here and changing the colors. I did all my leaves in gold, um, and I did um, three shades of pink for the flowers because my theme was white, pink, and gold, but I didn't want it to be too similar, but then 
I wanted it to be cohesive. So having different shades and also different textures of the same color will really help keep the look cohesive, but still not so boring and repetitive. All right, so here are our flowers. The next thing up are the butterflies. I ended up only, like it's so funny, um, I'm doing this, so this is part of my 10K. I'm almost there with 10K followers and subscribers. So I was picking each um, letter and number was going to correspond with one of my top three videos. So my top three was the Grinch, um, Ariel, Little Mermaid, and butterflies and then i ended up after everything i ended up only using two butterflies but i want to show you how to do your butterflies the key to the butterflies just like what i was saying with this whole theme in general is i went with three types of butterflies and then within the three types of butterflies i did a couple different sizes and then i mixed up the colors so they're all some combination of white gold pink glitter cardstock and regular pink cardstock. And so you can kind of see I started to mix and match them up here. So what you want to do is let's find this set of leaves as well in case you want that. I'm going to go here just so that you can see the image number. But all I did was I went into images and searched for leaves. I was looking, you know, the leaves are a great way to cover up your mistakes. They're tiny, but then they can be strategically placed to cover your seams, your glue, where you messed up, where, you know, when you're putting together your letter K, if your tabs are just slightly off, you want something to help you cover up your mistakes, this is the way to do it is with these leaves. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so with the images, let's go look for some butterflies. I do have a few um, tips and tricks for that. So let's look up butterfly. And I wanted some details to the butterfly, right? Like I wanted some cutouts, but not like too many. Let's use this one. And um, I kind of like this one. I'll just do two so I can show you. We'll insert the images. And the first thing that you want to do is, let's make these really big so that we can see them. So I did use this butterfly over here. The only difference is I don't like super, I like details, but I also want low maintenance details. I don't like these small little things because so many times they'll rip on the cutting machine. And so then I gotta recut a whole butterfly because I can't use it if there's like a, a tear in it. It looks horrible, right? So what you wanna do is the quick, easy fix is you go to contour and you contour them out. You hide all the things that you don't want in this butterfly. I don't want these tiny little things. And in fact, even some of these big ones, I don't want. I don't want like this one. So make sure that you're even with your butterflies, right? So I'm just gonna select on these really quickly. But this contour tool is awesome. So please learn how to use it. Um, I'm gonna get rid of these bottom ones as well. Oops, I'll leave that one there so you can see where I didn't contour it out. So you can see I contoured all the little ones out. Um, I didn't get to these two, right? No big deal, I was just trying to show you. Um, and on this one, I don't want two colors. What I do want is, oh, you know what? This is all layered for us already, so wonderful. There's a top blue layer, a white, a dark blue, so if you want to make this this many colors, it's nice to do it because you can see the dark blue, it's a full butterfly. So the wings, when you go to prop them open, it will give you all those layers. So you can keep all this. They got rid of the black layers, so you could just either remove them or if you want to show them, let's see what they look like. So it's an outline and this is just a bigger butterfly. You can keep this one and do this layer. So let's use the colors that we have. This layer is pink, then this layer. Um, you don't want pink and, oh, you could do pink and pink back to back, but you want them to be the different shades of pink. So let's do that. Maybe this one's gold. Maybe this one, that one's already white. Maybe this one goes back to a pink layer. And then maybe this one is white 
So you can see you can really layer it. So this butterfly, one butterfly is six sheets of paper. I mean, it's not really six sheets of paper because you can do multiple things on that paper, but it's six different colors. So this would be a great one because you will get a lot of layers. So now you have this. What I would do is, well, first let's resize it. We definitely don't want it to be 25 inches, right? Um, so let's see. And then on this one, so that one's all layered up, so it's perfect. On this one, I would just duplicate. We're gonna create the back of this, okay? So go to contour, and we're gonna hide all. Our back layers are gonna be full. We don't need them to be cut. So I'm just gonna click hide all. Everything is filled in now, so I have this. And I can arrange, send to the back. And you, you can make the first one the same size, right? Because all these little cut, cutouts will show the color behind it. Now you could duplicate it some more and make this one so first let's, sorry, I duplicate the wrong one, but just hide all. So this gives you the full shape and then make it a little bit bigger. Arrange, send to the back. And maybe this one, you want it to be pink. This top layer is gold. Maybe this is all good already. So that's how you get your layers like that, okay? So you wanna grab the whole thing and make it smaller, right? Let's say you wanna make it this small this is still too big because i know seven inches by five inches that butterfly is huge <laughs> but what i would do is i would then duplicate it make this one a little bit smaller that's how you get your variation right and then on this one i would change the colors maybe make the top layer pink the middle layer white and then the bottom layer um gold so you can see you're, we're, we're just mixing it back and forth and then this one's a little bit smaller so you're gonna get that varied look on your piece. And that's it. So I'm going to delete this for now and I'm gonna show you what the Make It page looks like. So let's go to Make It. And I, I already recorded the tutorial on how to piece this together. So um, you'll see that my original design it, this was a, my first time doing it like this. So I always, if you're making it for the first time, um, I always cut way more butterflies than I need because I don't want to be missing one butterfly and have to go back and pull all the different papers for it. I'd rather just have a bunch on hand. And if you make a mistake, you have extras. So I always do a bunch of leaves in a, different colors, way more butterflies than I need. So, all right, so here's my white layer. Here's my acetate. Here's my rose or my flowers with my butterflies. This is my pink glitter cardstock. So you can kind of see I'm, I'm remembering all the things that I'm doing. Um, all right, so this right here and this one can all be on one sheet. I would click on this butterfly, click on the three dots, move object, because there's room on that other sheet, right? So we can move it onto this one. And now we have to rearrange but it's okay, you can put this butterfly maybe right here. Maybe this, is this one smaller? No, but you can turn it so it fits in this space. I mean, we can save a lot of space. I use, you know, I use nice paper, so I don't wanna waste it. And so with my scraps, I also wanna make it easier to use. So if I line all this up properly, Okay, and then I have one more. Maybe I can get this. I could probably do a better job, but you can see. Next time for my scrap though, I have a nice rectangular piece that's easy to reuse. So that's kind of like where my mind is when it's removing all these things. Okay, so here's my K. This is the inside that's decorative. And then here's my bottom K. Oh, and I realized with my tabs. So I'm gonna go back, cause look, my dotted score lines, cut lines aren't on top of here. So I'm gonna cancel, this is what happens. So with this file, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. So our tabs, these are all cut dotted lines, right? 
So they're on here, they're grouped together, but they're not attached. So the difference is when you attach it, we're saying cut on this tab and also on this tab, dot this exactly where I tell you to dot it. So you attach it. And I'm gonna go to the Make It screen so now you can see the difference. So on this particular tab, it's actually going to have, and just click OK. This one has the dotted lines where it's gonna cut. These still don't because we didn't attach them yet. So you can see all we told the system was like, this is the pattern that I want the dotted lines to be, but I didn't tell you where those dotted lines are going to be. So let's cancel out of here. And we wanna group or attach this one and attach this one as well. All right, so let's go back to the Make It screen um, and see what we have. Now all those should be attached together. Just click OK on this. Um, all right, so for some reason, it's saying this is too long. OK, so this is fine, this is fine. Technically, this is fine as well because see, it's still within our 12. It's just the system only wants to do 11 and a half inches because it wants to give you a quarter of an inch up here and a quarter of an inch down here. But if you only have a 12 by 12 mat and you only have 12 by 12 cardstock, this is still fine. We just need to move this K. So click on the three dots, move object. And in this case, we're gonna create a new one. And sorry, my eyes are going crazy. Okay, I'm gonna use this sheet, confirm, okay. It always does that for some reason. Don't worry about that. Let's go back to this one. So this one, even though it's saying it's calling for a 12 by 24 mat, you can trick the system. It's fine. It will only cut 12 by 12. Just make sure when you line up this paper that the paper is lined at the 12, uh, 12 inch mark. This will cut perfectly. Or you could move it a little bit and this will fit fine, right? So, all right, Um, here are our flowers. Here's our K. Do you see how it was it was hanging down there before? Uh, design space gets glitchy. Just go to another sheet, come back, and it's fine. And that's it. All right, I hope that was helpful. Let me show you one more time what this looks like. And here it is. I love it. All right, see you guys next time. Let me know, though, comments, questions. Um, was there something that I glossed over? Do you want more details on something? or just even let me know this was the perfect pace. <laughs> and if you have a special project that you want me to work on, uh, post your comments here. If you need to send me something, it's Anne, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com, and I will see you. Bye.